I'll start off with a brief history of Aquatint. Aquatint was invented around 1650 by an artist named Jan van de Velde, who was living in Amsterdam, but it wasn't popular until Francisco Goya completed and published a suite of 80 prints called the Capricos in 1799. And Goya used Aquatint extremely well in those prints, and the subject matter included fantastic creatures and nightmarish visions. In my own prints, I'm using Aquatints to get shades of value, but I'm also using Aquatint as reference to the subject matter in Goya's Capricos prints. So Aquatint is a technique that I'm using, but it's also subject matter. Here I'm working on a print titled X. This is one of two proofs that I pulled off the plate in first state. I'm working back into this proof with brush and ink, and then I'll use the drawing as a reference for further development of the plate. I'm using salt and vinegar to clean the tarnish off of this plate. You can see the plate change color under the salt and vinegar. Like a shiny brand new penny doesn't stay shiny for very long, especially in a humid environment. And New York City is a very humid environment. My copper plates don't stay shiny for very long. And a 3070 mix of salt and vinegar does clean tarnish off of copper. You can try this with a tarnished copper penny. That white chalky stuff is called whiting. I'm using whiting and alcohol to take the grease off of the plate. Any greasy residue on an etching plate will act as a resist to the key ingredient in a traditional aqua tint, and that is rosin. Rosin is a solid form of resin that comes from pine trees. Here's my dust box. I built this myself. The white cord coming out of the bottom is connected to a horizontal fan in the bottom of the box. Turn on the fan, blow a rosin cloud into the upper cavity of the box, put your plate inside the box and let the cloud settle onto the plate. And it will form a perfect dot matrix of tiny little grains of rosin dust all over the plate. Rosin is that stuff that baseball players use on their hands, ballet dancers, flamenco dancers, gymnasts, and violin players also use rosin. So here is a perfectly dusted plate. You don't want to touch it or blow on it or disturb the dust because that will show up in the final image. The next step is to fuse the rosin to the plate or melt the dust. Rosin melts at 240 degrees Fahrenheit. Here I'm using an alcohol lamp to do a hand melt. For a real even melt, I'll put the plate in my studio oven. And sometimes I don't even use rosin. I'll just airbrush the plate with acrylic. The different methods of aqua tinting a plate produce different effects. And the look I'm striving for always determines the way that I aqua tint the plate. Here I'm putting stop out on the plate. This is asphaltum. I'm painting asphaltum right over the melted aqua tint so that when I drop the plate in the acid, the asphaltum and the grains of fused rosin will act as a resist and protect those areas of the copper from the acid. The longer the plate is exposed to the acid, the deeper the bite and the darker the tone. The acid that I use most often is ferric chloride. I also use nitric acid for spitfire aquatents. Nitric is a hotter acid than ferric chloride. Ferric chloride is not really acid though, it's a corrosive salt. And the advantages of using ferric chloride are that it doesn't produce dangerous fumes, it's fairly odorless, and it's not absorbed through the skin. So it's the safest thing to etch a copper plate with. This is another plate that I'm working on. This one's called Backbiter. And this plate already has a coat of fused rosin on it and I'm painting a stop out in a few select areas that will remain white. The overall image is pretty dark, so I'm going to aqua tint most of the plate. I work on each one of these plates for a long time. It's a long series of aqua tinting plate, plates, painting on stop outs, dropping the plate in the acid, which is what I'm doing here, cleaning off the plate, proofing it, how does it look, then using that information to go back in and aqua tint the plate again, paint on a stop out, bite the plate, clean it off, proof it, how does it look, and on and on until I get the 
image right. It's a very time consuming process. I'm living with each one of these images for long stretches of time, years in some cases. And this is the very sweet part of printmaking, getting to actually pull a print. It's really fun. And in the state proofing phase, you really never know what's going to come off the plate. And that's exciting. So here, the paper's damp. I'm pulling it off the plate. And all of those tones of gray to black were made with various aquatents. And in some cases, by scraping aquatent back with a scraping tool and a burnisher. 